Welcome to the big land known as Labrador. Dramatic coastlines, sweeping barrens, thick boreal forests, and ancient rock formations. The natural wild beauty of this place surrounds you at every turn. The living landscape is its own wonder, teeming with eagles, moose, caribou, and on the coast, rich marine wildlife. It is in this vast and undulating expanse where there are more lakes and rivers than you can possibly comprehend. There thrives a species of fish that is the holy grail for most anglers. The wondrous native species that is the crown jewel of Canada's waters. The brook trout. Labrador is one of the last best places left in the world to catch wild brook trout that reach truly epic proportions. These are the trout of legend and the compelling reason why I've traveled to Labrador. Come join me on my adventure to this incredible land as I visit one of the oldest and most famous brook trout lodges in Canada, Igloo Lake Lodge. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new fly fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, Brook Trout, a spectacular species considered to be the prettiest game fish in the world. Like many anglers, I grew up catching these small stream jewels, fascinated by their stark natural beauty. I love the bright white along the edge of the pectoral fins that fades into reddish orange as it gets closer to the body of the fish. Of course, their blue halo scattered throughout their body often outlines a wide range of colored spots. Every part of a brook trout is unique and spectacular in color, especially as they move into their spawning colors in August. Like most anglers, catching a 15 inch brook trout in my home waters was considered a true trophy, a size you just hope to catch. So imagine fishing in a place where brook trout are not measured in inches, but by pounds. This is why Labrador brook trout are so special and why the cost and trouble of getting here is so worth it. For years I've been hearing about the incredible brook trout fishing at Igloo Lake Lodge and it's always been on my bucket list. So when the opportunity came to travel to this legendary fishery, I jumped at it without hesitation. Who doesn't want to catch brook trout of three to six pounds and even larger on dry flies, mice patterns, and streamers? I was so pumped for this trip. My journey began at Otter Creek Floatplane Base in Goose Bay. While we had originally planned to leave the base first thing in the morning, Mother Nature threw us our first curveball. 
stormy weather delayed our float plane flight until much later in the afternoon. Despite this setback, we did finally leave and after a relatively short flight, arrived at Igloo Lake Lodge. Weather delays are part of what you must expect coming to Labrador, like other destinations such as Alaska. The influence of the North Atlantic on this land can be both swift and dramatic. While we didn't have the opportunity to fish this day, we were compensated with a stunning sunset and an opportunity to get set up and prepared for the next day's fishing adventure. It's gonna be hard to sleep tonight, that I can tell you. After a solid sleep, thanks to the fresh air and wonderful dinner the night before, I went to breakfast for coffee and waited to hear what the plan was for my first day of fishing. Just when I thought this fishing adventure couldn't get any better, it did. Lodge owner Steve and Craig Gillingham told me that if I wanted to, we could have a day trip to the famous Eagle River to cast for Atlantic salmon. Whoa, what a wonderful surprise and a tremendous way to start my trip. In speaking further with Steve, he told me the lodge was unique because at different times of the year, they could offer fly-out day trips for either Atlantic salmon or an opportunity to catch Arctic char. At Igloo Lake, we have the best, I guess, the monster brookies that people uh, dream of, and uh, this is the place to get them. In addition to our monster brook trout, we have in-season Atlantic salmon that we fish for from mid-July to mid-August. Also, we fish uh, far north for Arctic char, uh, mid-August to mid-September. We piled our gear into the float plane and swiftly took off and enjoyed an incredible sightseeing tour from the air. My guide for the day, Craig Gillingham, had me set up my nine weight rod coupled to a large arbor reel with lots of backing. The salmon here can get quite large and they'll definitely run you well into your backing. Craig, so we've just arrived. We're at a special spot here on the Eagle River. Um, and this is one of the great options you offer, Atlantic salmon fishing, in addition to the great brook trout fishing. Can you tell me where am I gonna start? Um, I've got a bomber on. Yep. What do you think we should, where do you want me to cast and, and what do you want me to do for a presentation? So Colin, you wanna start a little up here, up towards the, uh, the brook here. Yep. You wanna fish all this water area right here. Um, this is the Eagle River right here. Yeah. Uh, use this salmon hole up right here in the uh, cooler, deeper water right here. Okay, perfect. Key is just methodically work it over. Exactly. Got nice overcast day, a little bit of rain, but that's actually perfect for salmon. Perfect fishing. salmon I've had, conditions. I've had yeah. some of my best days on a lousy, rainy, cool day like this, and there's no bugs. No bugs. Perfect. Okay. Let me get into it. I'll go right here. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Okay, just cast straight out column right here, let it drift in, uh -huh. 30 to 40 feet out. Okay, 30 to 40 feet, okay. After having no luck fishing from shore, we decided to hop in the boat and try to reach the rocks and runs farther out. Craig believed that the salmon would be stacked up in the deeper water. Okay, just put it out there, Colin. You're in. Yep. Okay, just sit back now and we, uh, once the anchor grabs. So you just methodically, foot at a time, work your way down. Exactly, and... so you just come past the rocks, keep working your way down. So Craig, one of the things that a lot of people, certainly people with salmon fish know about, but uh, people in other parts of the United States and Canada, and they haven't heard of a riffling hitch. Right. Can you explain what a riffling hitch basically does for a fly? Yeah, well basically it's a, it's a half hitch you put on a fly, and it makes your dry fly come to the surface and present very nicely along the, uh, along the water. So it's basically a wet fly that we're tying a hitch into 
that makes it go perpendicular to the current and then it wakes across on the surface. You got it. And it seems to agitate, it's like a dry fly. It agitates Only, the fish. Uh, I know some people will wake bombers or dry flies for salmon, uh, especially in shallow water, it seems to work. So a few things I've learned about using a riffling hitch is you have to vary based on the current. You have to, sometimes I have to go all the way 90 degrees or perpendicular for myself to get the line to, to put some uh, tension on it and get the fly to wake, pull it up. And other times I'll go down to 45 degrees or even less an angle if it's fast to get that wake. It's right in his kitchen. It's right there, waiting for him. But it's the one that's farther back there is the one that moved. I moved him twice. Yeah. All right, awesome. finally. Good job, Colin. Good stuff. It was riffling through some uh, kind of choppy water. Yeah. You get him on the reel here. Oh. Fish is coming right at me. This is why you got a large arbor reel. Okay, right in front of the boat. So what we're doing is Craig's gonna take me into the back bay here. Keep your so, rod up a little if yeah. you can. We're gonna get him into the net. You kind of just gonna step out here. He's going for a run again. He's going back out in the what? Out there. Way. Try to keep him in here if you can. I am. I yep. I'm trying to put inside pressure on him. It's a big fish. Whoa, sweating. It's hot. A lot of work. Oh. Okay. So we're gonna try to net him there now. We're gonna go right here. I'm gonna go right here. If you can step forward a bit. I want to get him away from the rocks. Oh, yeah. Come on out of there. Okay, there we go. Come on in, come on in, come on in, baby. Come on in, baby. You get him in a little bit farther. Big man. Get the head up, head up, head up, head up. There we go. <laughs> Congratulations. A big male. That's a big male. Let's get the net here. Oh, this is 20 pound plus fish. Easy. Put it down. And we'll just, oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful fish. The big kipe he's starting to get. Still silvery, getting dark. Oh, it's ready to go. So just get a nice little look. Beautiful, keeping the water here. And it's ready to go. Oh, my hands are still shaking. That was such a big salmon, well over 20 pounds, a male on a little fly. And that's one of the benefits of coming here to Labrador and Igloo Lake specifically, because not only do you get the big brook trout, big pike, but you can also fly fish for big salmon. Thanks, Craig. Great job, Colin. That was awesome. What an incredible trip I'm having here to Labrador. Several fish rolled on my fly but none would take it. That's salmon fishing. Despite not having any more success, my first day in the water was truly epic. Any day spent casting to Labrador salmon or trout is definitely a blessing in my opinion. My third day at the lodge, we decided to visit one of the many back lakes in the area, commonly referred to by locals as ponds. These lakes are relatively shallow and famous for producing large hatches, a match made in heaven while dry fly fishing for brook trout. 
After a quick boat ride across the main lake and a short walk through the woods, we assembled our gear and headed out into Burton Pond. My guide today and for most of the week is Travis Pinson, a young and enthusiastic guide who possesses excellent knowledge about brook trout fishing. Okay, so Travis, uh, we've had a nice hike in. We're here on Burton's Pond. Now most people say, I thought I'm in Labrador to river fish, but the cool thing about Igloo Lake is that there's lake fishing, there's river fishing, and there's pond fishing, which is a small little back lake, right? Yes, sir. And what this lake is famous for is dry fly fishing, as I understand, right? Yes, sir, dry fly action. Three, four, five, even bigger brook trout. And we just had one after we dropped the anchor here come up on a drake, you said, right? Yes, sir. You got gray drakes and green drakes? Yep, brown uh, as well. Brown, okay. And what really got you excited was you found a hex. Yeah, a, a big old hex. Big hex. And if we got lucky, we'll see a hex hatch happen because there's one thing I've seen, whether it's smallmouth bass or it's trout, a hex hatch makes them go crazy because it's so much food, one gulp and they get very aggressive, right? Explosive takes. And now if the trout start to rise uh, big time, say, they, you can pattern them then. It's almost like you're hunting for fish, and if you see a trout take one mayfly, he'll go right to the very next one, the closest, and you try to put your fly in front of the next fly. And uh, more times than none, he'll come up and take that fly. With no luck at the first location, my guide Travis suggested we zip over to another spot on the lake. Upon arrival, we quickly and happily discovered a large mayfly hatch was underway. Now the real fun of dry fly fishing could begin. Got him. Got him. Fish on. Yes, sir. Oh, it's a nice fish too. Yes, sir. I can't say how much fun it is to hunt these big brook trout that are all around us here, sipping mayflies in the current and trying to put your fly ahead of them, yeah. predict where they're going. You, you did a great job walking me into that fish, Travis. Now we're using a barbless fly, so we minimize the damage. Yes, sir. That we do to this fish. And the water's good and cold, so playing them properly. And was this, eight pound or 10 pound? Eight pound test. Eight pound test. And it was literally, what, the boat length away? Oh yeah, maybe. It wasn't very far from the front of that boat. Okay. I think he's ready here, Colin. I think he's he can too. get his head. Yeah, I'm gonna get his head up here. Bringing it up. Okay. There he goes. Here's his head is up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Good job, Colin. That was a lot of work to get right. that fish. Fly comes right out. Beautiful. Yes, sir. This one is ready to go. Beautiful. A boat length. It was like a rod, one rod length and a bit. And I just went. And he just and he didn't just nope. sip it. He <laughs> hammered it. Oh, and they're all over here. Shall we continue the fun? Yes, sir. No point in stopping now. Well, that was an epic eat. I gotta tell you, we're having some incredible eats. Look at this five weight. Look at that tank on dry flies. Now, what size is the dry fly I've got on this? Number eight, ten. Ten, eight, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a nice fish, Colin. It is. Okay. I don't think we've caught any real small ones yet. No. We've all been tanks, and we keep seeing this shark. Oh, yeah. That's just out of my range. Oh, sweet. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is so incredible. Beautiful brook trout. What's that, three and a half, four? Four, I'd say. Wow. On a dry fly, hunting them, and all around us is brook trout. There's dozens and dozens of these. 
And this is just one spot. This is just one spot. We've got a whole bunch of them in this pond, Burton's Pond, and the main lake is where the bigger ones are. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm gonna have such a good week. <laughs> this is a fantasy. After such a fun day in the water and lots of fresh air and exercise, I couldn't wait to enjoy a hot meal, good company, and to plan for tomorrow's adventures. This is the fun of coming to a wonderful lodge like Igloo Lake. Despite the blue skies in the morning, heavy clouds and a threat of rain were in the forecast today. So our original plan of returning to Eagle River was put on hold and we decided to head back to Burton's Pond for more brook trout fishing on a dry fly. Where yesterday started slow, today the fish were on. I could barely strip my fly without a hit. Set. Got him. Nice. Uh. <laughs> Whoa, that was quite the take, and uh, oh, thanks for oh, oh. telling me to set. No problem. Oh, this is a powerhouse. We actually thought it wasn't that big a fish, but I think it's a bigger fish. She's thick for sure. This is, uh, I switched to my six weight because we're seeing fish like all around here, and uh, I just want to be able to cast. All right. Beautiful. Oh. Perfect job. Perfect job. Thank you, sir. This is so awesome. Flies out. Just like that. And what I like to do, if you don't mind, I like to release this one. Yes, sir. You've been doing all the, the hard work. Away it goes. <laughs> On dry flies. When you can pattern a fish, uh, you see him come up and eat a fly, and if there's a fly, in his uh, path, then he'll usually come up and eat that one there. Uh, if you can put your fly in front of the next fly that you think he's gonna take, nine times out of 10, he'll come and grab your fly. And then you're gonna have some good fun. Right beside going the to the right, going to the right. Right beside the boat. It doesn't take in a second here, I'll, I'll move he's it. He's gonna go! Oh my. Wow! Yeah, buddy. That was incredible. Just speaking about hunting the fish. <laughs> just speaking about it. So we just all went out here, and I was just changing from my six weight to my five weight, and uh, Travis says, I just saw one come up here. Cast to the right, cast to the right. As soon as you change from the green to the brown, eh? Yep. So obviously, the brown drake is what's working. And yet earlier, the green drake was working. Yeah. Look at the power of this thing. So for people who have caught, you know, 10 to 14 inch brook trout, or maybe even a 16 or 17, look at this, look at this. <laughs> this is a brook trout right beside the boat. I mean, a rod length away maybe. Okay, got his head up, got his head up. <laughs> this is so much fun. This is beyond awesome. Got the fish. All right. Despite the fun we were having with these active fish, we could see more movement in the shallow waters near shore that would suggest many more fish were in there. We tried dry flies and streamers, but could not move these fish. Yet, we could see them occasionally rising or chasing bait fish. However, our underwater cameras told us a different story. There was actually lots of big four to five pound brook trout in two to four feet of water. Very frustrating, but that is the challenge of fishing. Unfortunately, our day was cut short 
when a huge front rolled through. We tried to stick it out, but eventually we decided to head home. We made our way back to the lodge and warmed up with a good cup of hot tea with some freshly baked cookies. Today, my guide Travis has taken me out onto the main lake to fish a number of known spots where big brook trout will forage for food. There's no hatches happening, so we'll have to experiment to find what works. So Travis, you got us into the honey hole, as it's commonly known, here at Igloo Lake. And it's referred to as a honey hole for what reason? This is referred to the honey hole because as the summer goes on, the water warms up. There's like a little cold spring comes in here and the trout stack up in here. That you can, you, when the water is more clear, you can look out over the boat just like a couple of weeks ago and me and another client, we seen six trout swimming around together. Six biggest kind. But uh, I mean, they, they just really concentrate in here when the water warms up. Had a grab. Yep. Pull. Go. Oh, it's a big boy. That's a big boy. <laughs> right where you said it was going to be, Travis, yep. right by the rock. Yes, sir. So I think one of the keys, I got him on the rail. Oh, oh, oh. no. No. Bust you off. No, he didn't bust me off. Yes, he did. No. Yes, he did. No, he did. That's some straight eight. That was a big fish. It was a big fish. That was a tank. I'm gonna try not to let you down. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right, man. There's plenty more. Well, break my heart. Okay, so what I've done is cast past where you think the fish are mm -hmm. in this zone here. Huh? Let it sink. Oh, look at that big one just rolled over there. Yeah. And now I'm going to do just sh short pulls. That seemed to be what was working. Oh, another one just rolled right where my fly is about to go. Oh, it just had a grab. Sit. Okay. Oh, my goodness. What a place. What a place. Again, I'm on the reel here. Wow, what a powerhouse. They just do not stop. Now these fish dig for the bottom, I tell you. They're so big and thick, eh? They got obviously lots of food in here. Oh yeah. Okay, lifting it up. Woo Big papa. Got him. Look at it, fills the net. <laughs> and the worst part is, the one I lost was bigger than this one. <laughs> a lot bigger. And this is a big fish. Look how many fishes. Look at that. Put it down. Go. So you got me throwing this chartreuse uh, rabbit strip with a cone head on it. Yes, sir. What does that look like, do you think, to them? I think it's just a really brightly colored leech, maybe. But uh, where the water's so dirty and uh, it's very visible for the fish, mm -hmm. I think that's what uh, really makes them strike. But you know, I always say, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great expression there, Travis. Yes, sir. So the key is, cast it out past where we think the fish are. They seem to be feeding. And they're feeding on freshwater shrimp right now, you yes, think? Sir. Okay, I'll do the short little pulls. Pull. Whoa. Nice, that's a trout. Yeah, you see the fly line jump. Oh, 
There it goes. Well, back to getting it on real quick. Because you just don't know these fish. He's coming to the boat fairly quick. It's a smaller fish. It is small. That's the smallest fish I've seen in this lake. Yep. Let's see if I can get them in quick for you. No. Hang on. Good job. Look at that. Fly popped right out. It's one of the beauties of using barbless flies. Easy, and you got great nets here. Pull more of the net. You're right. That wasn't there long. <laughs> Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, that was a great morning. Travis, thank you very much. No problem. Had a lot of fun. We did some streamer fishing for some brook trout, hooked three or four fish. I lost a big one, unfortunately, got some other ones. This afternoon, you're gonna take me in the brook. We're gonna go do some stream and river fishing for a big brook trout. And is there any dry fly? It could very well be. The flies we used on this trip for brook trout were a combination of dry flies, mice patterns, and streamers. Top streamers were chartreuse bunny strip leech, crystal bugger, and the golden retriever. Mice patterns which worked well included gurglers with gray bodies, Moorish mouse, and gurglers with blue or purple bodies. For dry flies, big drakes in sizes 8 to 10 were deadly. Dark brown drake, brown drake, and either a green or olive drake. After having great success lake fishing in the morning, we decided to switch it up in the afternoon and head down to Joey's Brook, the small stream that flows right behind the lodge. Despite the small size of the stream, I was told there are actually some very big brook trout in the system. So I'll have it go out and yep. come in? Yep. Bang! That was pretty easy. We're, I'll bring them in here. Okay, yeah. Not a super big fish, but beautiful. And just right where you said he was gonna be, trying to use that rock. He's certainly using that current. Oh yeah. Look at the rod. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Down. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was uh, bang on, Travis. That was just a small one. Right so behind the rock, yeah. So a... all the way through here? Yep. We're looking because it's a little undercut. Oh. That's a nicer fish. It's a bigger one. Yes, sir. That's a nice fish. It is. It's beautiful. Look at the colors. Okay. I'm going to get us head up. Yep. I'm get him in right away. Oh, turn. That's not the, f the fish that took a swing at my uh, fly either. Oh, wow. Wow. Look how thick that fish is. What an attack. Now these fish, very, very hard to hold. That's why I left people used to use gloves, but I don't know. Whoa. Look at that. He's got a mark on him. He obviously had a run in with an osprey or something. Yep, trying right there, to. yep. Got it? Oh yeah. Okay. What a beautiful specimen here. It's a male, isn't it? It's starting to get a, oh, already wanted to go. Look at that. Yep. It's gonna rest. And I took that chartreuse streamer, it was about three inches long, <laughs> and it was maybe a foot under the surface, just wham. So these guys, that big predator, he's eating a lot of the little brook trout in here, isn't he? Yep. That's what he's here for. And to catch it on dry fly, or about five weight, 
little streamers. <laughs> this is fantastic. Middle of the afternoon, yes, a sir. nice lunch. Thank you, man. Let's Before get another one. Hey. <laughs> The fishing on the small stream was beyond imagination. The brook trout ranged in size from two to five pounds. Unbelievable. It was surreal fishing for a small stream. By the end of this day, I was exhausted. Exhausted from both the exercise and more probably, the exhilaration of catching so many large brook trout. We have the best fishing in Labrador. We have the best brook trout fishing. The diversification, as I said earlier, of our fly oats make us so unique. But also we have the best staff. We have the best guides. We have the best cooks. Our food is second to none. Our facility is going to be such that it's the best in the industry. That's our goal for Higlu Lake Lodge. I think we might just might get a big trout here this morning. Hopefully. <laughs> Wishful thinking, I guess. The water's a little bit more clear here today, too. So I, I, think that, I think the fish are gonna see it a lot more easy, you know? I think that's really key. Sit. Got him. Get away from the rock. Oh, he's right by that boulder. Okay, he's in. Get him on the reel here. Seems like a decent fish. Got a little bit of the side. Ah, uh, smaller fish. All right. A little slow this morning. Had one on so far. And now this one. And that's, oh, that's a decent fish. That, that's a decent fish. Look at that tank. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. Getting the head up. I'm gonna call up this anchor rope, Colin. Yeah, please do. Went right into the boat, like he knew where to go. Look at that big tank. Yeah, he's hooked well. So, what I did was I was going really slow and giving it twitches. Because they're not super aggressive this morning. And this is why I love coming to Labrador. You can catch brook trout not in inches, but pounds. Okay, getting them up, getting them up. What a slob, what a slob. <laughs> Look at that, that fish, is Colin. That a big fish. Yes, sir. <sighs> wow. How to start your day in Labrador. <laughs> Look at this trout. That's six to seven pounds. Oh, yes. Easy, easy, six to seven pounds. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's do this because I want to... Have this fish go off nicely. Our hands are wet. And I'll take him gently here. Okay. There he goes. <laughs> Swim away. Good job, Colin. <sighs> <laughs> what an incredible week I've had here of fishing. Burton's Pond, dry fly fishing, sight fishing, four, five, six pounders here on the main igloo, catching big brook trout on streamers and then going in the river. Mice patterns, streamers, dry flies. There's so many varieties, a way to catch big brook trout like that. And that's why you come to Labrador. Thanks, sir. After that tremendous morning on the main lake, we decided to have lunch and a short nap to recharge. Then we decided to go back to Joey's Brook 
and cast streamers and mice patterns. It seemed everywhere we fished, the brook trout were aggressive and willing. I was fishing an outflow from a small pond behind the lodge, having to back cast due to the trees. Fudge! Missed a strike near the outflow seam. I know there's a big trout line there. Whoa! Got him! And this is a big fish. My five weight rod, 4x tippet, barbless streamer hook. Hang on! Don't break me off. Oh no, he missed the net. Yes, yes, he got it. Oh my God, it's a small stream giant. After catching two giant brook trout in one day, it was time to kick back, relax, and enjoy a cold adult beverage and watch another stunning sunset. The perfect end to another stellar day here at Igloo Lake Lodge. Our original plan for my final day here at Igloo was to try and head back out on the Eagle River to try our luck for Atlantic salmon one more time. However, bad weather kept us stuck at the lodge for a good part of the day. Thankfully, when the weather cleared up in the early afternoon, there was still time. So we packed up our gear and headed to the Eagle for one last crack at the salmon before our flight back to Goose Bay. Let your line go all the way down straight to that rip. Fish. Oh, fish on. All right. So we just arrived. And... <laughs> nice, oh, we got nice grill. grills. And uh, first cast. First cast. Good job, Colin. Got to like that. Got to like that. Oh, look at that. And this fairly bright fish always come right at me. Whoa. Look at that. Nice Beautiful. Color. Beautiful girl. Whoa. Nice. And what you see me do, we call it bowing to the fish when it does a, a lunge or a run or a jump. And that's so you don't break the leader. You tip it. All right, so I think what we're gonna do. Let's pull anchor. Is we're gonna pull anchor, go down, and move to where we net the fish safely and not hurt the fish. That's our big concern. So because we're out in a boat, fishing this set of uh, rapids here, as it goes into the pool, and it's the best position, it's just a little unsafe. We can't get a good cast. What we're gonna do is go into the slack water around the corner to land this fish so we don't harm it. You can get out there if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna get out. And you go grab the net. So, still got some energy, but I'm gonna get his head up. There we are. Oh, it just popped out. Popped out? There he is right there. He did a turn, and there he is swimming off. Good release. <laughs> I gotta tell you, there's not too many places you can go and make one cast and get a fish. Uh, that's pretty special. It was. My last hours of fishing turned out to be more than I could have expected. A true fantasy fishing adventure. So Colin, we have a fly out uh, we do for Atlantic salmon. We come to the Upper Eagle River at a place called Owl Brook. We fished here since 1972. It's a great place to fish. Lots of fish. It's a short window, about three weeks. Uh, but we'd love to take guests here and they have a great time salmon fishing as you've experienced this afternoon. 
with the Arctic char. Uh, we fly to a place called Char Lake, which is two hours north from the lodge. Uh, it's a window of about four weeks. It's an extra add-on for guests as well. But uh, the Arctic char fishing is very special. You're fishing in knee-deep water at the base of the Torn Gap Mountains over a school of about a thousand char. Wow. Lots of fun. So what you've got set up here, Craig, for the Atlantic salmon, um, you've got a boat here. Yeah, boat and we here. fly yeah. in here with the beaver. And how many anglers can you accommodate here for the Atlantic salmon? Two, two anglers is what we prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a pool here. Two anglers is, is a, a good number. And are you going to be offering uh, that people can come here and stay at a, uh, you're going to have a small tent accommodation set up? Absolutely. We have a uh, outpost here where we just built our new platform and our, our new Labrador tent will be present there next season. So guests can come and stay here for the night, uh, head on the next morning. 45 angle downstream right behind the boat. You let me know when you want me to start jigging. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go a foot at a time. A nice riffle across there. Nice column. Nice. Oh, it's oh, a nice it's a fish. I think that's a salmon. Yeah. That is a salmon. Wow, what a powerhouse hit. And it was just where you said it was going to be. That You can at see the these edge. riffles over here. Down below, they're being caused by the, the rocks, the current breaks. Yep. Oh, oh that's a nice fish. And that is why we like Atlantic salmon fishing, the silver leaper. Now this is definitely one I think we're gonna have to go ashore for. I think so. Oh, look at that. Yep, I think we're gonna have to pull the anchor <laughs> and uh, go ashore. So salmon just did a smoke and run and uh, Ace cameraman had to pull the, had to pull the uh, anchor. Oh, we got the motor started. This is a powerhouse fish. Okay. So we're just gonna hopefully take control of the fish. Got a lot of side power or side pressure on him. He's gone out into the deeper pool. Wow, he's still taking a line on me. Oh, I do not have control of this fish yet. Wow. I think he's good for another run. Oh, it's a nice fish. Look at that. It's a beauty. It's a beauty. He's definitely at least 15 pounds. I'm thinking. Yep. The other one we caught was 20. We got a nice male. This looks like a female. Okay, I'm gonna step out. If you don't mind, do this nut. Okay. Got him. Holy! There you go. Wow. Is that a male or female? That's I think female. it's female, That's isn't it? Female. Yeah. Wow. I'm gonna put a rod over here. Whoa! There you go. Dance. What a beauty, Colin. Beautiful. Just let him break when he's ready. Beautiful fish. Good coloration. Just darkening up. Just darkening up. Yep. We're over 40 miles from the ocean. 40 miles from Cartwright. Yep. And there he goes. Gonna rest there for a second. Whew. Great Thank job, you, Tom. sir. It's one of the great things about coming to Igloo Lake Lodge is they have a fly out here to uh, Al Brook. Al Brook on the upper and, eagle. Yeah, and you can come and do some Atlantic salmon fishing in addition to the big brook trout. What a bonus. As I boarded the float plane for the trip back to Goose Bay, I reflected on how truly incredible this week was. Dry fly fishing for rising brook trout of three to six pounds on the back lakes. Casting for massive brook trout on the main lake where fish over 10 pounds have been caught and then having to deal with the awful situation of only catching a seven pound brute. Then the trout fishing on Joey's Brook. Truly heaven for those of us who love small stream angling. The cherry on this trip was of course, catching some Atlantic salmon, including one large fish that certainly tested my skills. I genuinely hope that everyone watching this will someday have the opportunity to come to Labrador and Igloo Lake 
to enjoy fishing of this variety and magnitude. There are few places left on this planet that are still untouched and offer fishing and natural beauty like this. To learn more about Igloo Lake, visit our website. Thanks for watching. The new fly fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,